welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Forbidden Archaeology, or as I sometimes call it, Paleolithomania. <laughs> Now, we've heard something today about megaliths. Megalith is a word, it means big stones used in structures. And I was very fortunate last night to be able to go out to Stonehenge and visit the classic megalithic structure here. I'm very grateful for that opportunity. And although my main f focus of research is not megaliths. Sometimes in my travels around the world, I do see some megalithic structures. For example, last year I was in India at a place called Humpy in uh, west central India, and I just happened to notice this megalithic structure sitting on a hill next to a boulder perched in a very interesting position. I don't know what it means or what it's for or how old it is, but it is a megalithic structure that I've seen. Also, uh, a couple of years ago, I was speaking at a meeting of the World Archaeological Congress in Osaka, Japan, and I visited the Osaka castle there, and some of the interior walls of the castle have some megaliths as part of them. This, this one is 48 square meters, weighs 108 tons, and this wall is full of stones such, of such size and weight from, taken from distant places. So I have seen some megaliths, but it's not what I'm speaking about tonight. Tonight, I'm going to be talking about paleoliths, <clears throat> and that means old stones. <laughs> Not those old stones, who I dearly love, but other types of stones, old flint objects, and also human bones, human footprints, and very ancient layers of stone. And the question that I'm really looking at is, how old is the human species? Some researchers are looking into how old are different civilizations. I'm looking at the age of our human species on this planet. So how old is our species? Today, the most common answer to that question comes from the modern followers of Charles Darwin, and they tell us that the first human beings like us appeared about 150,000 years ago. Uh, before that, uh, they tell us there were no human beings like us. There were only more primitive ape-like human ancestors. However, the writings of different ancient wisdom traditions, such as the ancient Sanskrit writings of India tell us a different story. They tell us humans have existed on Earth for many millions of years, going all the way back to the very beginnings of life on Earth. And there is some evidence for this. It's not simply mythology. And I've documented this evidence in these books, some copies of which are here today. This evidence is not very well known because of what I call a process of knowledge filtration that operates in the world of science. We can call the blue box the knowledge filter. What it represents is the dominant consensus in the scientific community about a particular question, in this case, human antiquity. And Reports of evidence that support the dominant consensus will pass through this filter very easily, which means, for example, that students will read about this evidence in their textbooks. 
But if we have reports of evidence that radically contradict the dominant theories, this evidence tends to be filtered out, forgotten, set aside, dismissed for unfair reasons. And therefore, most people, even in the professional scientific community, are unaware of this evidence, which contradicts the ideas being promoted by the modern followers of Charles Darwin. Now, I've spoken about this evidence in some unusual places. <clears throat> For example, the Royal Institution in London. Uh, many of you who are a little bit older will recall that the backside of the old 20 pound note shows the Royal Institution Lecture Hall with Michael Faraday, the physicist Michael Faraday, speaking there about 150 years ago. One thing I really love about England is how much the English people love their traditions. <clears throat> You know, the same table is there in the Royal Institution that was there 150 years ago where Michael Faraday was speaking. 150 years later, Michael Cremo speaking at the same, same table and some of the same people in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't speak only at these scientific institutions and universities. This is me speaking at an eco camp in Alto Paraiso, Brazil. <clears throat> and I enjoy speaking to all kinds of gatherings, but not everyone appreciates what I have to say. Uh, this was uh, a little bit of a discussion after my lecture at uh, the University of Sao Paulo in Brazil, one of the evolutionary biologists there uh, took exception to some of the things I was saying. But now I'm going to go over some of the kind of evidence that I'm talking about that I document in my books. This is a geologist, Dr. Virginia Steen McIntyre, she was involved in dating an archaeological site in Mexico at a place called Huayatlaco. It's near the town of Puebla in central Mexico. And there, archaeologists discovered human artifacts. This is the excavation at Huayatlaco. It was a very professional excavation. The artifacts were photographed in the layers of rock in which they were found. And of course, the archaeologists wanted to know how old these things were. So they called a team of geologists to date the site. Virginia Steen McIntyre and her colleagues used four methods to date the site. And they concluded that the site must be at least 250,000 years old. Old. But the archaeologists said that's impossible. According to their theories, human beings capable of making the artifacts did not exist anywhere in the world 250,000 years ago. So they refused to publish the age for the site given by their own hand picked team of geologists. So Virginia Steen McIntyre and her colleagues were a little upset by that. So they independently published the age for the site in a scientific journal. But when they did that, they experienced an extreme negative backlash from their colleagues in the scientific world. Virginia Steen McIntyre lost a teaching position that she held at a university in the United States and her career as a geologist was suddenly finished because she had dared to publish something that contradicted the dominant theory. 